Kim Townsville here. In this video, I will show you the unboxing, the assembly, and the operation, and some troubleshooting I had when installing my Blink cameras. I purchased the five camera kit, and that gave me a free Blink Mini. So if you'll check around, you may find a good deal like that. If you'll check in the text below, I'll provide a link for the Blink cameras and the other things that I bought. I researched for well over a year before I ended up buying a camera system. I did a lot of asking around, did a lot of reading, read a lot of reviews, and I finally settled on the Blink camera system because it seemed to meet my needs. I'm very happy with it, but I did have some sticking points when I was installing this. Hopefully, this video will help you get through those points. I have uh, chapter titles with the uh, points that you can get to without having to watch the whole video, if that helps you. Instructions, a little bit sticky on the back. Looks like some mounting hardware and I have the five camera set Come up and from the bottom, and this is the sink module. So I got this free. Let's see if I can figure out how to open this one better. Yes, just pull the blue part off the bottom. Yeah, I have it all out. Camera set up to film, and a cup eight cup of Grateful Earth coffee safely away from the electronics. Let's figure this out, shall we? Very nicely engineered packing. They could have made it white so that pieces would show up a little bit better because those little random pieces hidden in there. So dig around in there. It does come with energizer batteries, so that's good. There's always more. They should make this white or a different color than black. Taking everything out of the box, my Blink Outdoor 5 camera kit came with all of this. Five cameras and five of these things. I guess this is the mounting stuff. These, these things right there. Each one has two Energizer lithium batteries. Set of screws for each one. And also it has uh, the sink module with the wall charger and the cable, which I didn't know that it came with this. I thought this was just the camera set that I had to buy the sync module separately. So I actually bought a separate sync model too, which I may not need. Or I may put these five cameras on one and the other cameras on the other one. I don't know, we'll see. And the only instructions that come is just this little thing like this. And it tells you to download the Blink Home Monitor app, add your sync module to, add your camera to the system, follow the in-app instructions to complete setup. The only other thing that comes in here is just a, it says Blink Sync Model 2, but it just talks about batteries. 
So you have to download to get more instructions. And we're going to switch phones and do that. Let's get this QR code going. Sorry, my phone screen is dirty. How to set up your devices. Before you begin, need a mobile device. Oops. Walks you through all of that. Okay, I'll read all this stuff and come back. Okay, I need to install the app and it tells you blah, 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 blah. So I have an Android, but I can't take a picture of this using my phone. So I'm hoping that if I tap on it or get it on Google Play, it's going to work. Yep, and it did. Yay. And I'll get that set up. Create my account. I had a little trouble setting up my account. You have to type in some information then scroll to the very bottom. And it's going to ask you to send um, a code. And you have to tap on that. And I wasn't sure if I sent text or by phone, but I had to do it several times and actually contact customer support and finally got it to work. But once you type in that code, then it, it links. It has to be linked to your Amazon account. So if you don't have an Amazon account, then you can't have a Blink camera system. They just, it is an Amazon product and they just force you to do that. So then once you get it set up, your Blink account set up, you can start adding devices. And you can see here, it gives you the options you just tap on which device you want to add and go from there. So when you get a device added, and I'll show you how to do that, it says at the top, the plus a plan trial. You have so many days where you have a free trial where it uploads your videos and stores those for you. And once that trial is over, you can pay, I think it's $10 a month or $100 a year to keep that service continuing. Once you are a paid member, any Blink devices that you buy, you get a discount for. So if you want to add a lot more cameras or floodlights, you might want to just start off with maybe one camera or something and then add devices as you have that discount code. Okay, I had a little bit of trouble getting to here, but I think I'm ready to start adding some devices. I took one apart and played with it to try to figure out what was going to be going on over here. And these are a little tricky. The instructions say to use the enclosed tool to unscrew the back cover. And I'll rip the box apart to see if there's anything else in there. But this is the, the enclosed tool. don't really know why we have five of these. I thought these were something to do with mounting. But anyway, I've got one apart. I'm going to show you how I did this. And my fine motor skills are, are ter terrible. But you just pull this thing off. And then you can either use the flathead screwdriver or what they're calling a tool to turn it this way. You turn it to the left, lefty-loosey. Then you're just supposed to kind of use this thing to pop the back off when it when it's freely spins, it says, because it doesn't really unscrew. So you're supposed to just kind of pop it off like this. To show you the instructions on there say that you can also stick this down in there to grab it, it's supposed to snap it and pull it out, and these two will be attached, but it came out okay on that. So now we're going to put the batteries in, and it does show you that the positive side goes up. Where's that little there? That's the positive side, so it goes up. 
I always put those in first, snap it like that. Then this one's going to be opposite, the positive side. Could be a little bigger, couldn't they? It goes down. So that's in. And then this goes back on. It's blinking. And this goes back on and you use this handy dandy little tool to screw it around the other way. I guess until it no longer spins freely. Yeah, I can feel it getting tighter. Don't do this. I thought these little rubber or plastic seals would go back inside. They don't. You're going to need this open for mounting the cameras. But now the little camera's beeping, or no, excuse me, now the little camera's flashing, wanting to be hooked up to something. So let's see if we can add one. Removing the backs was a very frustrating part of this for me. I ended up getting my laptop and going online and looking this information up because this was not on the app. And it's almost impossible to try to look up things on your phone while you're using the app to install these things. It just doesn't work. So I recommend that you have two electronic devices to do this. The information online at the Blink Help Center gave me a lot more information, better, better pictures and all. They have great, great graphics, but I didn't know that that was a tool until I got online and looked it up. We have to start with the sync module. So... It's not really, 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 really clear direction, so I gotta go put the sync module in and then come back. Put this thing, put the cable in. Oh, it's got plastic on it. Tricky, tricky, tr tricky, tricky, tricky. I'm gonna run it now, getting that out. Look at that. Take the plastic off. And put this. It's not even a C cable. Put that in there. This will go in here. Very tight fit. Plug it in. We have a blue light. So we have our sync module. What would be cool is if we had a little way to hang this up on the wall over here. So I'll figure that out. But right now I guess it will loop on my phone. Later I did find a little plug-in that's much more handy than having it like this. That will be in an upcoming video. if it will let me add a camera. Oh Lord. On the device, what device? Oh, you have to do that before you put the batteries in because the QR code's in here. Nice. I guess I'll enter it manually. Yeah, that would have been nice to know before you put all the back covers on there. You're going to have to get the QR code or the serial numbers that are inside your camera. You'll have to use the QR code to add your cameras to your account so you can put the batteries in, but don't put the backs back on the cameras until after you've added the QR code. While I'm setting up all these little cameras, I went ahead and unboxed the Blink Mini Indoor Camera. I got this one free for buying this five camera set. And what comes in it is the camera, a cable, and then the wall charger. So you have to disarm the entire system in order to add anything. So I'm going to go ahead and add this one 
while I'm adding my five exterior candles. When you're putting your base back on, there's a little USB port down there. So make sure you put it on there like that. And you're supposed to be able to use this to tighten it up. And you just twist it until it's tight enough. Then these little tools and things are supposed to make a match some some matching mounts for them. You can put this tool that they're calling it. You can snap it right in the back. You have to take that out. Or just keep those somewhere. But you can put it in the back like that. And then it shows you this is supposed to snap in here very easily. But I actually had to use a pair of pliers to get mine in. It did not want to snap in easily. I'll show you the instructions on my laptop. This, then you just pop it in the back here. And you can mount it. Well, pops out easy. That's not a good sign. And you can, um, this thing is supposed to swivel a little bit here. And then you can mount it like this and change the angles so you can get better coverage. That's how those pieces work. This goes in the back. These two things can go together. I had to use a wire pliers to get those down. And then this goes in. The back of the camera after you put the back on correctly and screw that in. These are the instructions I found on line about how to do that and they make it look a lot simpler than it really is. I hope it's simpler for you than it was for me. I tried for about 30 minutes to get these things installed and got so frustrated I drove over to my son's house and he was able to figure out a shortcut so let's watch that. All the way to the side it's got four rings, flat side, then you can push it in. Oh. Snaps in. Awesome. I spent 30 minutes trying to do that. The Bling Floodlight Mount. You think that you're getting this camera in here, but you're not... The outdoor is sold separately, so this is just an accessory for the camera. I'll have to use one of the cameras that I bought. Attach this to the camera. Attach the camera to the mount. And then this will act as a floodlight. Hopefully sensor. Motion sensor. And it says that you can use this clip here. To attach it to vinyl siding but this is pretty heavy it's pretty heavy I'm not I'm not putting that on my vinyl siding I'll be using the I'll be using the holes on this plate and I'll be putting mine in with a screwdriver with some screws I do believe it's quite heavy let's see if this thing's gonna work Instructions are very simple. Download the Home Monitor app, which I did. You have to add the camera to the mount before you start messing with the mount, the floodlight. You're going to have to open up and activate the batteries on the back of this. Then we're going to have to attach the camera to this. So it shows you that you can use the wall installation like I'll be doing. It says you can says you can use the no drill installation for the final siding but I think it's too heavy for that and then it's supposed to look like that comes with QR code that you can use your camera to get to some more information battery safety stuff that's pretty much it I encourage you if you buy a blink product to sit down with the pieces and look at it before you start going through the app Go look up some stuff on the internet because the app is not really clear about what you need to do. Like it didn't tell you that you needed to scan the insides of those cameras to add them to your um, system. 
And I went ahead and put the back on one of mine. It's glad I didn't do it for all of them. But otherwise, you have to take them all off if you don't do that. So there's a lot of things I don't tell you beforehand. When I was setting up my account, um, I didn't look at the bottom. It was going to send me a text. I gave it like a home phone number and I had to redo all that hooey. So the instructions are beautiful, but not necessarily logical and sequential. You also have to de-arm your system before you can add a device. So I had to de-arm everything now. So I'm going to twist. So it's showing you, or showing me, that that's locked. And this is going to be unlocked, I'm assuming. It comes right off. And... There we go. It has a little protector so the batteries don't get activated. It's got Duracell batteries in it already. Four Ds. That's nice. Put this back on. Ooh, it's... You see that light come on? There we go. Things don't snap quite as easily as they would have you believe. And let's find all of our little indicators and twist it back on. That was easy enough. Don't get blinded here. So we we did that step. Now we're going to snap our camera onto the mount. I'm wondering would it not be easier to plug it into this first? I think I'm going to do that first. It's not a C C cable, so we have to make sure we get it lined on there correct. Not easy to do. The indoor camera was like this too. It was um, a little tricky to snap in. Hmm. Do I have to take this off? doesn't even feel like it's fitting. It squeezes down in there, but it won't stay. Is that correct? I'll take this back off and play with it for a little while. So there's the... Yeah, it does go in there. It's just all this hooey's in the way. Back on. I hate to pull this off because I think that's probably one of the things that's getting in the way that's keeping it from getting down in there. But let's see if I can try it this way over to the side. Probably not. No. Crazy. does not want to stay out of the way there. Doesn't really want to stay out of the way there either. Let's see if I can get this thing in there tighter. I think this is just too much plastic in here. It just does not want to stay in there. It's not staying in there.
push it down some. I think this little cover is going to have to come off. That's what I think. I hate to do it, but you know what? I'll send the whole thing back if it doesn't work. what you have to do folks take this little thing out that would have been a nice little addition to put on the instructions okay now we're supposed to be able to snap this onto here that little hole where the screw is make sure it's screwed in really well it's supposed to snap right onto this okay well that one went on fairly easy now let's add this baby to my system and we'll see if it really works i'm gonna test it in the bathroom i made the mistake of testing the floodlight which did work but the motion sensor does not work unless your system is armed. So make sure that you arm your system and that way the motion sensor part will work. System is armed. Let's test this floodlight in the darkest room of the house. See if it's really motion sensor and see what's going to happen. Dark. Yes. You should be recording me and sending me an alert on my phone. The floodlight installation plate comes with three pre-drilled holes, yet they only provide two screws. I'm going to try to use one of these leftover screws from a solo light kit that I installed. And I don't trust this for the siding. I'm going to remove it. just pops off so I'm going to put this where I want it use a red pen to mark my dots use this big nail to start a hole for the screws and use my black and decker light driver to install this and then hopefully slide this back on and rearm my system I was pleased that actually installing the floodlight mount went easier than some of the previous parts of installing this camera system. It everything worked, just went went great on this part. Made me very happy. So the light's gonna install like this, and the plate has one hole at the top and then two on the bottom, or mine does, so make sure you do the up one going up, and then once I get this on the on there it's supposed to just slide in like that quite easily my spare solar light screw is too big i've got to go find one this size be right back i'm actually going to use one of the smaller ones that came with the blink outdoor camera because i'm not going to be using screws to mount most of those i'm going to use the clips that i've ordered Now I've got to test the picture, and tonight we'll test the light. I added the floodlight, just like I added the cameras. You add a device, 
can click OK. You can customize your floodlight settings, which I'll show you later on regular camera settings. This is what it looks like on my app. I can click on the camera icon to the far left and get a live recording. I can click on the light bulb with a little light shooting out from it and cut the floodlight on for 60 seconds. I can tap on the camera and it will take a picture of what is currently showing at the floodlight. Very happy with the way that it operates and the way that it looks. This is what it looks like installed on my post. Maybe 15 feet away. Floodlight for the blink camera. While you're setting up your account, it's going to update the firmware, and if I remember correctly, it does this almost every single time you add a device. It gives you some advice about positioning your camera. You want to avoid anything that's going to be waving like tree branches and shrubs because that's going to set your camera off, their motion activated. You don't want to have it pointed towards the uh, sun. You want to have it where you're, it's not going to go off for every single vehicle or pedestrian that goes off in the distance. Try to get it just close to your home or your areas that you're monitoring. And anybody that's going to be walking directly, it tells you that side-to-side -side movement is more easily de detected than forward or backwards. When you go into your camera settings, you have a lot of cool features in here. It can tell you the uh, battery level. It can tell you the temperature of your battery. It can tell you whether you want to enable the motion detection or not. You can cut that off. It can tell you the zones that you're going to be monitoring. It can You can adjust the re-trigger time, like how fast will it uh, start taking a new footage every 10 seconds or every, you know, whatever you want to adjust it to. It shows you the sensitivity. You can adjust the clip length. Like, for example, some of mine are very short seconds, and some of them are a little bit longer because I want to capture a little bit more data there. You can say that you can end the clip early if the motion stops. That will help to preserve your battery, I believe. You can get an early notification, but that may interfere with your recording. If you get an early notification, it tells you as soon as something's happening. You can adjust the motion recording. You can cut the night vision off and on. I kept mine on auto. You can put the intensity, and you can enable the speaker volume because you can talk through these cameras which is a very cool feature you can adjust the quality of your video either save or standard or best you can enable photo capture and this is my floodlight it tells me my battery is 100 percent and that it is motion activated i could cut that off if i wanted to like if we we're going to be outside and i didn't want the light you know coming on every time we moved around you can have the automatic shut off timer adjusted for how long it's going to stay on and you can also adjust the light brightness of course, the brighter that it is, the faster it's going to wear your battery out. Additionally, on the camera settings, you can adjust them to the brightness. You can adjust them um, all different ways. You can delete a camera if you decide that you no longer want that one. You just have a lot of options on these cameras and the floodlight mounts. Now I'll show you some clips from the camera from various ways. I renamed my cameras to indicate to me what I was seeing so that when I got a notification, I would know exactly what uh, part that's being monitored is uh, was being triggered, so I wouldn't have to try to remember the serial numbers and things like that. These are the first clippings that I got, and it shows you the date, and or excuse me, shows you the day of the week, and it shows you the time that it went off, and they do them in order. Then this is uh, some actual clippings. I just took some photos when I was positioning the cameras, if you click on the little icon on the lower right that looks like a camera, it will take a picture of whatever the camera is looking at, and that's going to help you when you position your cameras. If it doesn't show you exactly what you want to see, then you have to go out and adjust the camera angle so that um, it captures whatever you want to see. The little icon on the lower left side, you can tap that and make a live recording. That does a little video section part of it. Then at the very bottom where you see where it says armed and disarmed, you just tap disarmed if you want to cut the entire system off. You just tap armed if you want to cut the entire system back on. If you look up there, there's a little bell with a line through it and a little blue running man. If you tap on the little blue running man, that's going to disarm just that one camera. If you tap on the little bell, that's the snooze notifications, and you can tap on that and go in and snooze the notifications 
it will continue recording if need be, but you just won't get notifications about it. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that would be, so I'm just leaving mine so that I get the notifications. If you tap on the little straight horizontal lines with the little dots, that's going to take you to that particular camera's settings. So here's some more views from some uh, various places where I was playing with positioning my cameras. I ended up not putting them here. I was just trying to test them to see what the quality uh, was. This is not where my this, this is not where my cameras live. I was just using this to test it. Now let's look at some clips and video clippings. Um, this is a deer that was in my front yard. They are very, very tame and have tried to come up the steps before. Here's one that's just boldly walking through the driveway. He set off the motion sensor a lot on the outdoor house. Here's uh, probably the same deer during the daytime. So the quality of the cameras are pretty clear. I drove home one day and you could hear the song that was playing in my car. And here's a little cat running around in one, one area of the yard. It took me a little while to figure out how to use the talk feature. But when, if you click on live recording, if you click on that little icon that's over onto the bottom left, the little video camera looking thing, it will start recording a live video. And then there's a little talk button and you can hold that and you can talk as long as you're holding that down and then you can go up to the top and hit close and sometimes on mine instead of saying close it has um, something different so I'll show you walk you through that so if you want to go live you click on the little camera here where the re little red line is pointing it will have a button like this it says hold the talk so like I said it's different on mine sometimes and on this is for my floodlight I guess that's why it's different and so I can turn my floodlight on here I can turn the floodlight off here and I can talk here so that's how you can find those uh, features where you want to talk and it also saves when you make a live recording it saves your recording and what you're saying and if anybody talks back or anything barks back at you I guess thanks for watching my very long video about the blink cameras I hope that it helped you to get through some of the trouble spots that I had makes it a little bit easier I am perfectly content with my system I'm very glad I bought it I'm going to buy some additional cameras and another floodlight mount for it. And I will also have some videos up about some accessories that I bought to make the system work a little bit better. If you have time before you go, watch another video. Just consider giving this one a thumbs up and leaving a positive comment. And check my channel for my other Blink videos. Thanks a bunch.